Welcome back to another video in my series on EdgeTX, the software that is almost certainly running on your RC controller. And in this video, we're going to break down what is probably like the fundamental job of your RC controller, and that is to take movements of physical controls like sticks and switches and knobs and map them to outputs on your receiver. And if that sounds simple, well, let's see if you still feel that way at the end of the video. And before we get into that content, you should know that this video is part of a series where I go through a whole bunch of information about Edge TX, the operating system that runs on our radios, to try and teach people more about it. A lot of people know the basics of using it, just enough to get by on a day-to-day -day basis, but they don't know, like, when you go through all these menus, like, what do they do? And how do you get the radio to do what you really want it to do? That's what this video series is about. And there's a whole playlist. I want to invite you, after you finish this video, to check out that playlist. It's got a whole bunch of information about Edge TX and will make you a whole lot smarter about how to use your radio. That's linked in the video description below when you get to the end of this one. At its heart, what your receiver is doing is extremely simple. It's easy to look at all of the menus and settings that Edge TX has and think that what it's doing is incredibly complicated. And in a way, what it's doing can be complicated, but at its heart, it's really very, very simple. And I want you to understand the simplicity so that then as we build up to the complexity, you've got that foundation to work with. So start with the idea that there are physical controls on the radio, like the sticks, the gimbals can go up and down, left and right. We've got switches here and they can be in one of two positions or one of three positions, or we've got these knobs and they can be all the way left or all the way right. We've got a whole bunch of physical controls and those physical controls can be in some state or position. And basically what the radio wants to do is communicate to the aircraft, or I guess it could be a ground vehicle, it doesn't really matter, but communicate to the aircraft the state of those physical controls. So that as I move the throttle up, the aircraft knows that I'm raising the throttle. Or if I flip the arm switch, the aircraft knows that I moved that switch. And the way that the radio does that is by mapping those controls to channels. So if I'm on the main screen and I just press the page key to go over, I can see a list of the channels that the radio is outputting. Channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. And I can see the channel position. And we've seen this before. As I raise the throttle, one of the channels goes up and down. And each of these channels is representing the state, the physical state of one of the controls. So if I flip the arm switch, we can see that channel five goes between high and low. And if we look inside Betaflight, we can see those channels being represented here. And again, as I flip that switch, that channel goes high and low. As I raise the throttle, the throttle goes up and down. And I want you to understand that at its heart, all the controller is doing is transmitting these channel values. For Express LRS, there are 12 channels in the, in the particular flight mode that I'm using. There are 12 channels, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it, that's all we've got. Everything we wanna communicate to the flight controller needs to be communicated through the positioning of one of these channels. So like, for example, you can imagine a scenario where there is an arm command and digitally there is some packet that is sent to the flight controller that says, I want you to arm now but that's not how they do it. And the reasons they don't do it that way are historical. Back in the old days, we just didn't have digital pr protocols, but also if we were to make such a digital protocol, then we'd be kind of locked in and everybody would have to agree to use that exact same protocol. We actually see that happening in larger aircraft running RG Pilot and Pixhawk. They use a protocol called Mavlink and it is this serial protocol that's used to communicate to the flight controller. And all the flight controllers use Mavlink. And Mavlink just tells the flight controller, arm right now, disarm, return to home. It just has commands for all this stuff. But that's not how it works with the type of flight controllers that are commonly used on FPV drones. We just have these channels. And the channels can be anywhere from all the way up to all the way down, 0 to 100. Minus 100 to plus 100 if you're doing it that way. Or <laughs> we can see that uh, beta flight is internally representing the channels as going from a value of 1,000 to 2,000. Sadly, there are like four different ways of actually representing the channel value itself. But the point is that the channel goes from some low value to some high value, and that's it. We just have to figure out and define how to interpret that. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So the most basic thing that we have to do when we set up our controller is we have to tell the controller which physical controls are gonna be mapped to which logical channels. And the place that we do that is in the mixes screen. So if I press the model key on my radio and then page a few times, I will get to mixes. And that is the screen where we create that mapping. 
You can see here, I've actually deleted all of the mixes that were set up on this model. And if I start moving the controls, nothing happens. Literally none of my switches, none of my sticks, everything is just locked out here in the flight controller. Now, in theory, it doesn't matter which physical control you put on which channel. The channels aren't special in any way, but there are some conventions and there are usually good reasons to follow the conventions. And one of the conventions is that the first four channels, channels one, two, three, and four, are gonna be your main four control channels, pitch, roll, yaw, and throttle. Uh, the exact order that they come in is not universal, but you can see that Betaflight expects them to come in in channel order A, E, T, R. And if we look at the letters over here, we can see see that channel one is roll, channel two is pitch, channel three is yaw, and channel four is throttle. So for convenience, we would want to set Betaflight up to be that exact same way. There are other conventions that you may run into. For example, Express LRS wants the arming channel to always be channel five, and there's a reason internal to Express LRS why it prefers it to be that way, and you would want to learn about these conventions as you go, but in general, there's nothing special about any of these channels. You could theoretically put your main control channels on channels eight, nine, 10, and 11, and just you probably shouldn't because that's not what people expect. So channel one is gonna be the roll channel. Fine, how do we set that up? We're gonna, and by the way, we're gonna do this on the black and white screen radio first, and then we'll do it again on the color screen radio so everybody gets an example. We're gonna highlight channel one using the jog wheel and click the jog wheel, and that will create a new mix on channel one. Now we have the option here to name the mix, and we could do that, but we're gonna skip that for now. It's It'll be, Usually it's not worth the hassle in my opinion, although sometimes if you have a very complicated setup, maybe it would be worth the hassle. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and highlight the source. And the source is what physical control is going to be input into this mix. Now we can see here that the source has been selected as aileron, A-I-L, or the roll axis. The radio knows that the default channel order is A-E-T-R, and it has decided that by default on channel one, you probably want the aileron. But notice that there is a little I next to aileron there. That's telling us that this is the aileron input which is coming from the inputs tab, which we haven't talked about yet. And we're gonna set that aside for now and come back to it later. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the jog wheel one time till that begins blinking. And I'm going to roll the jog wheel until I get to the aileron. Where is it? Rudder, elevator, throttle, aileron. And do you see now that instead of the little I, there is a little, it's supposed to represent a joystick. And what that's telling us is that now channel one is taking its input directly from the position of the aileron stick. So if I move the stick left and right, we can see that channel one is moving as I move that stick. Now let's do the same thing with the jumper T15 and see how it's different on a color touchscreen radio. To get to the mixes, I'm gonna press the model key and that is gonna be this menu key here. That will take me to model setup and then I can either page or tap to get to the mixes screen. And again, I've deleted all of the default mixes, so the only thing we've got here is that aileron mix that I pre previously set up. One of the things you're gonna see that's different on the color touchscreen radios is that it doesn't show all the channels by default. It only shows the channels that currently have a mix assigned to them. So here we've got channel one and nothing else. What I can do is I can either tap or highlight here on the plus to add a new mix and select what channel I want that mix on. Let's put that on channel two. And if we look at our Betaflight channel mapping, AE is channel two, and that's gonna be the pitch or elevator. So we'll do that on channel two. And we have the same options here, name, etc. Naming on the color touchscreen radios is a little easier because we actually have a full keyboard and we can literally tap on the keyboard. But we're gonna go ahead and skip that. I don't think we need to do that now and we can pick a source. And again, it's a little easier here because the menu pops up. We don't just have to scroll through a menu that we can't see the whole menu like we do on the black and white screen radios. We can scroll through and we can see everything. As well, there are categories. So here are the inputs, here are the axes, here are the potentiometers, here are the other things. We can actually just filter based on certain things that we might wanna use as the source. And what I want is the physical input. Let's just go to all and let's look for that stick. Here's rudder, here's the elevator stick. And now we have created an input based on the elevator stick and that is gonna be mapped to channel two. Notice also that on the color touchscreen radio, as I'm setting up the mix, we can see here the physical input and the output of the channel. And that's pretty cool. 
you can see here that the input and the output are directly tracking each other, but that's not always going to be true. We could do things to change. Well, well, we'll talk about that going forward, but right now we have the ability to monitor that as we're going and just check that it's working as expected, whereas on the black and white screen radio, we don't have that. If we drop back out to the main mixes screen, we also see the option here to show mixer monitors. And if I turn that on, on each channel, it will show the current output of the channel, which can be helpful when I'm making more complicated mixes to verify that they're doing what I think that they should be doing. So now we've got the four main controls assigned to channels one, two, three, and four. And again, notice that there is the little joystick or stick icon to the left of the control, meaning that we are taking the readout directly from the stick position and we are not going through the input screen which we haven't talked about the input screen yet, so set that aside for the time being. We also need to set up switches, like arm switches and so forth, and the process of doing that is basically the same. I said before that ExpressLRS wants arming to be on aux one or channel five. By the way, the four main control channels are one, two, three, and four, and then there is a convention whereby channel five is referred to as the first auxiliary channel since it's not a main control channel. So channel five is aux one, channel six is aux two, and so on, it's kind of confusing. Why don't we just say channel six? Well, you'll hear people refer to aux one, you just need to know that that's channel five. You basically just subtract four to convert between them. Let's go ahead and add an arming switch on channel five. And the first thing we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, well, which of these switches do I want to be my arming switch? And there are conventions for that, but it's your controller and it's your muscle memory. So you just need to decide what's going to work for you. I will almost always have the leftmost two position switch be my arm and I'll flip it with my left hand. So that's going to be this switch here. So I will add a new mix on channel five. I will go down to source and I will click and while I'm in this selection option, I don't need to scroll through and find the switch in a menu. All I need to do is flip the switch. And when I flip the switch, you will see it automatically highlights that switch. Uh, this whatever switch I moved is automatically selected. And that carries through almost everywhere in Edge TX. Whenever you need to input a switch or control, just flip the switch and it will pick it up. You don't have to go digging through a menu to find it. There are things that are only accessible by digging through a menu, but switches or knobs aren't one of them. Just move the physical control. So I will just click there and now switch SA is the source for this mix. And if I flip that switch, you can see that the channel is going up and down. I hope you're learning a lot in this video series. If you are, would you please consider joining my Patreon? Patreon is a website where you subscribe to me. The minimum entry fee is $2 a month and you get some rewards like getting access to my Discord server, but mostly what you get is a good feeling that you're giving something back. I make this content for free. I put it out there for free. I don't charge you anything. Don't put it behind a paywall. And I just hope that eventually you'll come to a point where you'll go, okay, I feel like giving something back. If today's that day, there's a link in the video description below to my Patreon. I'd love you to have you as a supporter at whatever level you think is fair for the amount of value you get out of my content. If that's $2 a month, great. If it's $10 a month, even better. You subscribe at whatever level you feel like and you can raise or lower or cancel whenever you feel like that's the right thing for you to do. Links in the video description below. Thank you so much. So to recap what we've learned in this video, there are physical controls in the radio, switches, knobs, gimbals, etc. They operate along a single axis, left to right, up to down, switch flipped up, switch flipped down. They all operate on a single axis. And the mixer screen in the radio is what maps those physical controls to a logical channel that comes out the receiver and then goes either to a flight controller on a multi-rotor or a servo, if it's something like a ground vehicle or a fixed wing airplane with no flight controller. But basically all the radio is doing is taking the physical controls, mapping them to a channel, and spitting them out the receiver for something to do something with. And it gets more complicated than that, but I want you to know that in a lot of cases, especially if you fly FPV with multi-rotors, it doesn't, that's it, that's it. Because the flight controller is gonna do all the heavy lifting of, of manipulating those signals and deciding what to do about them, and the radio just needs to pass the signals through. Well, we'll learn about some more complicated examples in future videos because it wouldn't be a good tutorial series if I didn't, but that's gonna do it for this one. I've got a link in the video description below to the full playlist where you can check out the next video and I'll put a card on screen as well if you can see cards on whatever platform you're watching on so you can go to that playlist and uh, see you in the next one.